Good morning, folks. This is Billy from Real Time Custom Rods and Real Time Fishing. Back in the rod shop again this morning, bright and early before it gets too hot, and doing a rod for my grandson Noah. It's his turn for one, and I'm building all my grandkids a, a custom rod. And hopefully, they'll get interested and love fishing as much as I do. So, I'll be laying that out. Hopefully, we'll probably do a chevron wrap, which is what I like doing, and the kids like them, they look good. So we'll take it from there. Y'all stay tuned. Okay, you got the rod laid out. They're basically three quarter inch centers. He wanted a red, white, and blue themed chevron. So I got the red, the white, and the blue laid out here. And I'm gonna do them just in those orders. I'm gonna run my strings in those orders. So I'm gonna start with my red. And I'm probably gonna leave three reds four whites and five blues and just increase it as we go through here and see how, how it works out. So I'm going to do this a little bit different um, than what I normally do. Not totally, but a little bit. Had someone contact me and gave me some good advice from what I believe was a very reputable source. His, his channel's Fish in Louisiana. And he does a lot of this kind of stuff. And he suggested, normally I would run, I was running three and four strings at the time. And he suggested I run, run them one at the time and I'd get a little bit better layout. So I'm gonna take his advice because I've learned in my life, if you wanna be successful at anything, you kinda need to listen to the folks that they're willing to help you that are already successful. And he, like I said, he took the time to reach out to me. So I'm gonna do these one at the time and see how it goes. Yeah, check out, uh, if you're in the rod building at all, check out Fishing Louisiana. He has done a lot of very nice layouts and chevrons and cross wraps. And, Very, very good. I'm trying to get my tension right up. Get this thing flowing. So that was two reds. Now I'm doing one white or my first white. I think I was letting my hand get a little too close to the blank. If it does that, I just can't get it to flow quite as well. Get it just the right distance, it'll just lay right in beside the other one. What I'll do when I finish both, or I'm gonna do three of these, these I'll um, come back and do some packing, tightening these strings up. First wind or two, they want to slip on you. This is a slick blank. They're all slick though. Seems like the ones I deal with anyway. And I'm just going this way, I'm below the red, and I'm coming back this way on top of the red. So down on one, up on the other. Okay, this will be three. Oh, here. Yeah, I'm hoping to build something that my grandkids can keep. And most of their, or all their life, and hopefully pass it down to a child one day. I'll put a little personalized message, message on it and a date. And I'm doing it. And This particular grandson's only eight years old. So hopefully when I'm wrapping these up in the hereafter, <laughs> he'll be fishing with it. Or maybe one of his children will be. Okay, that's three and three. And I'll give you some other friendly advice. Always pack with you if you can. 
with your burnishing tool. I was using picks a lot like these. They're very good if you need them and things are tight, strings tight, but what it does, at least for me, is it creates fuzzies. It kind of picks at the string and then when you, you don't notice it too bad till you get your epoxy on it, then you get all these fuzzies everywhere and you think, my gosh, the string's bad. Well, no, it wasn't the string. I will take it sometimes in these intersections and just pull because it works really good to do that. I think I'm getting this string a touch too tight because it's kind of hard to move. Like I've said a thousand times, take your time. There is nothing fast in rod building if you want it to look presentable. If you're building something for somebody else and you're expecting to pay, pay you for it, take your time and do the best you can. If you want to do something fast, take up motocross or car racing or I don't know. But I can honestly say this is some of the most relaxing things I do. I sit out here in my shop building for the people I love mostly and custom good friends and I've had some good customers already even though I'm fairly new at it. I think we got it there. Now I'm gonna put some blue on here. I'm gonna do four blues. I think that was two on this blue. I'm gonna do at least two more. Two, three, four. I need to do four, so I need to do two more. Just tightened up all my strings here, my thread, and put some new tape on the ends. It was getting kind of full. Got to down and up on this blue one more time. Like I said, I tighten up as I go. And never done many large. I've done a few, but many large diameter blanks. They tend to be easier and these small, I mean, these want to, the thread just wants to slide on this slick surface. You can't really rough the surface up. I guess you could put some color preserver, which is kind of like glue. And I guess you could even epoxy it before you even start it, and that would give it a little friction. So anyway, if you like what you see here on this channel, it's nice it's all fairly new. I'm learning as I go. You got any questions? Give me a Give me a shout in the comments if you'll please like and subscribe. It lets YouTube know that I'm doing things that people like to see. It's not going to cost you anything. I'm not going to hound you. <laughs> you're not signing up for an email address that you're going to get spammed with on that from me or anything like that. It's free. Absolutely. It just simply helps me in what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with... Uh, some red. I think I'm going to do five reds here. Yeah, my lines want to cross down here at this end and 
Now I got to do the rope a dope and bobbing and weaving to hit the lines just right. Okay, folks, I'm back. My YouTube camera decided it was too hot to work. <laughs> and it cut off, so I kept going. It's really going to be hot today here in eastern North Carolina, but it's really not hot right now. So I don't know. These cameras have a mind of their own. Anyway, I kept going. See, I've got the red, white, blue. Then I'm up to red. Now I'm going to do blue and then white. Um... I think it's seven strands of white. That last was six of red, if I'm not mistaken. Hardest thing for me to do is keep count of the threads. As your mind gets to wander and you get things, you know, you're paying attention to what you're doing, you start thinking about other things. One thing I did figure out, I think, while the camera was coming off and I was still going, I think I've been pulling these strings, these threads, I keep calling them strings too tight. When I went back to pack, they weren't packing very well. They were slipping worse and not packing very well. Putting less tension on these strings. It tends to be working a little bit better. I don't know if there's any set point where you can stop. You can pretty much stop these whenever you See this little chevron starting to form good. But I'm gonna keep going. So now, that was three, this will be four. As far as the tension goes, like I said, you kinda have to play with it. Take your time when you lay it out. If you get any of these dots off a little, it ain't got to be much. It just doesn't seem to flow when you're trying to wrap it like it should. It's not consistent. And I'm off some in here because, again, the eye doesn't necessarily pick it up. It's just hard to get it to lay just right. And we're talking the thickness of a thread, so, so it doesn't have to be all far. It's right in here. I always have to pack right in here. Tells me I'm off a little bit right in here. Get out this other end. It tends to kind of lay in there pretty good. challenge I have is finding something to mark on these blanks. It's not so blunt. These grease pencils are so thick. It's easy to be off the thickness of a thread just hitting. I try to lay that where I hit the top of those marks, not the center. It's easy to be off the thickness of a thread doing it that way. And so what my point is you can lay it out just right and understand all the math and Thing you're marking with is blunt, you're off a of hair. Create a little bit of a problem. Some people actually scratch the blank, and there's really probably nothing wrong with that. I mean, we rough them up to get the handles to stick better. And naturally, doesn't you don't rough them so thick that it's a problem. You just rough them up and you scratch it. I think I'm about finished up. I'm gonna go down and back one more time with this blue, my red, white, and blue American flag theme. I think it's gonna be done. And yes, I did like doing them one stream at the time better. I do think you are in more control of the way it looks. I'll check him out. Fishing Louisiana. I don't know 
how his channel started. Maybe like me, mine started out as a fishing channel. Due to some unforeseen circumstances, I've done more of this rod building and getting out on the water for one reason or the other. So his name is Fish in Louisiana and he does rod building. Mine is real time fishing and I even added and rod building. <laughs> kind of all evolved into that. Packing them all here. Figure out where I'm gonna tie it off at. And I'm left-handed, so I like to start at this end and work my way back. At least my hand doesn't go over what I've just packed if I do that. this with some color preserver. That'll hold these strings together. They tend to unwind overnight. I don't know if the humidity changes, temperature changes. Exactly what causes that. But tool there, burnishing tool. and Maybe I can get some of these strings to pack a little bit better. Soak into the threads. See the bubbles coming out. That's air that's trapped in these threads. It tends to release itself when this kicks in. All right, I'm a little further along here on my grandson's fishing pole, fishing rod. What I did is I went through and I put a layer of uh, thread preserver, color preserver on it. It actually sticks these threads together, acts as a glue. And where it helped me the most, and I saw this tip a while back on on YouTube you can take where all these bunch up and you can actually slice them at an angle and they hold together as opposed to just wrapping a bunch of thread and trying to feather them loose and maybe running into problems down in here with your with your wrap but uh, I went through and just feathered it out literally cut it sliced it pretty sharp angle kind of like you for lack of a better term, I'm gonna say you file down your guide feet to a point so the thread will ride up it. It's the same thing here, except I was riding down it and I didn't get that, that steep drop which created the crack. And it's not perfectly smooth. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back and put a design here as well as here on both ends. Um, down here. This is just serves the purpose to, to finish off this wrap. And I've got another one down here and I'll do something here at the hook keeper. And I've already done the uh, air releases and it creates a little bit of a, of a fuzzy look or a, a point. Fish eye, you hear it called different things. I kind of slice those down and I'm going to epoxy over everything and those will disappear if you happen to see those. I'm not going to, I wouldn't dare leave it like that. But uh, I try to get back and, and look at what I did and see ways I can improve or could have improved. <clears throat> and the thing, the single thread wrap did help. That helped me a lot. I think I've got a lot better wrap doing them one at the time as opposed to three and four. But the one thing I didn't, I think I should do differently next time. I started out with red here. I think I did two. Then I went to three and four. Then I actually started doubling them. I did four. And I think I've actually did eight and maybe 12 or 10 here. I'm not sure, but I think my, my increase was a little sharp. I should have gone 
the same. I should have gone two or three more, two or three more, and then by the time I've got to the same point, I would have different colors that progressed the same way. It just did it a little slower. And this looks okay. I'm happy with it, but it would be nice if these bands were a little thinner and more colors within the same area I have here. Same colors, but more of them. I'm just gonna try to break up the mundaneness, if that's as a word of this solid white here. So I'm gonna just hold two strings together. See how this is gonna look here. Hopefully I can hold it together just right. They'll lay in there like they should. Do one more around it and then I'm gonna cut the starting point. Get it out of the way. And I'll just hand this to I get to the end. There it goes. I got my groove in. Till then. I took my off because I was looking for my pull string. I'm trying to leave it about the same on the ends. So I'm going to go with that. I really don't want to pull those doubles all the way through, so I'm going to try to cut it close so I don't have to deal with a tag in and I pull it at an angle an angle just to be sure that it doesn't come up there we go I'll go down and do the other end also right down here Grandson Noah likes to play ball, baseball. So I'm gonna do a little white background here. Maybe take some red thread and do, most people would call it an olive branch. I'm gonna call it a baseball stitch on this particular one because uh, he likes baseball. So we're gonna see how that works out. I haven't done this yet. Well, I've done an olive branch, but I hadn't tried to make it look like a baseball stitch. So we're gonna see how it comes back. I'm gonna get through how it looks. Then I'm gonna take some red. Pretend that's the baseball stitch on this white background. And I'm gonna see if I can achieve what I've set out to do. around a couple of times get it locked in. I don't want it slipping on me. And I'm gonna go over and around. I think it's starting to look a little bit like a, a baseball stitch. I 
couple of rounds, put some space in it. I think I'll do under trying to match it. Try to match the one beside it. It's kind of what a baseball looks like. Biggest problem I've had with these is the beginning and the end. Like I said, y'all probably know this as a olive branch. But I like baseball. My grandson likes baseball. I played a little bit. His daddy's an excellent baseball player. So I'm gonna call it a baseball stitch. And we're gonna roll with that. A little light burnishing. Do burnish it. Don't get too aggressive with it. It really does make it look a lot better. A little baseball stitch. Okay. I'm finishing this up. I'm going to probably uh, put some uh, another whole coat of epoxy on it. I may, I'll put a sealer on the handle, balance the rod. But it came out okay. I uh, really enjoy this kind of work. There's the old Chevron, a little personal message from my, to my grandson with a date on it, tomorrow's date. And there's the guides. I tell y'all folks, I retired in May. And I had folks tell me they don't like retirement. Well, I'm here to tell you Unless something changes, my opinion is those folks are not doing retirement the right way. Spend it doing the things you love with the people you love. Try to worry less. And life is good. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, give us a like. Get us a sub subscri subscribe. Like I said, it helps me. It doesn't cost you a dime. We're not going to spam you try to sell you something we will sell you something if you contact us and want a fishing rod but no i'm not going to be out there hounding you y'all have a great day